Hey everyone, and welcome to the Day One Showcase. This is uh, Andrew here. I'm the founder and CEO of Day One, and it's really exciting that we're coming back. This is our fourth showcase representing and uh, presenting fellows from our fourth uh, cohort of the Day One Fellowship. And tonight we have an awesome event for you. We have four, we have 11 fellows presenting what they've been working on, uh, what their startups and what they're building um, and what a lot of what they've accomplished over the last 10 weeks in, in our fellowship. This, uh, these events are you know, culminations and celebrations of what everyone has accomplished and what they're building and the diversity of the fellows who have come through our program. Um, but it's also our chance to really celebrate the early stage founder. And what we like to do with these events is not build these like demo days um, where everything is about the, the next, is getting those checks and playing to the same um, trajectory of the, of the venture world, but to really showcase how founders in the early stages, often in the messy middle of building their businesses and getting them in front of you, getting them to showcase what they're up to. So these are founders who are, uh, that you're going to want to watch. Some of them are very close to fundraising and are ready to take that next step. Others are just in that formative stage, putting things together and will be really accelerating down the road. So we have an awesome show for you tonight. Like I said, 11 fellows will be presenting these. Uh, all these founders are just exceptional in every way. And I will, uh, and we'll get started. So without any further ado, let me turn it over to Abhishek Verma, who's going to be presenting Sankhya. So Abhishek, please take it away. Hi, everyone. OK, great. Hi everyone, this is Abhi. I'm the founder of Samkhya. Samkhya is a next generation uh, investment platform. It's a valuation platform for founders and investors both, uh, which helps discover the fair value of any startup. So let's begin. Meet Myra. Myra is the first time founder of Salad Sushi. Her business has been doing very well since the past eight months. Her, her revenues have gone from strength to strength and she wants to expand. And, and she also wants to build her team and reward them with equity. Uh, she wants to partner with delivery stores. And for all of these things, she needs the valuation for her own startup. But uh, as you know, valuation as, as a function, it has not uh, innovated since the past 25 to 30 years. You know, the options that Myra has right now is to go to consultants, which is a one-time expensive affair. And yeah, there are a lot of subconscious biases when you know there is a valuation that has to happen, and uh, most of the times there is absence of comparable data for you know by industry, market, or geography. And what this uh, results in is uh, most of these startups which are fundworthy, they act actually they do not get funded, and uh, this is something that even you know industry experts say, and you don't have to take my word for it. So. You know, uh, Michael Sable says that international founders, they should strive for global valuations. And even on the customer side, entrepreneurs, they are looking for a solution or a framework where they can, uh, you know, uh, sense check what can be the valuation. And so enter Samkhya. Samkhya actually allows entrepreneurs to, you know, to have their own financial models. Uh, our attempt is that they themselves are the best person to actually build their valuation, uh, even though they do not know any financial knowledge. And how do we do that? We onboard any entrepreneur with a CFO. We build customized models around growth, unit economics, and uh, expense forecasting. And then we uh, bring them into Samkhya, the, the business valuation platform. And we also provide them community support. So this, this is an all round uh, valuation platform, which helps not only identify the fair value, but also, uh, you know, help them with growing their business where, where, uh, by giving them the right amount of financial intelligence whenever they need it. And they also uh, reach out to different co-founders within their industry, within their market, and within their geography. So just to give you a snapshot, uh, you know, of the tool, we are in public beta right now. And, uh, uh, you know, so we have onboarded around uh, 20 paid customers. 
And uh, as far as the business model is concerned, uh, you know, in the next three years, we are looking to onboard around 100,000 startups and uh, with a, you know, with a fee of 50 uh, US dollars per month, uh, you know, it, it can go up to a 50 million in revenue. And uh, some of the testimonials from entrepreneurs, uh, you know, so uh, as I was saying, so people do mention that, you know, there's nothing uh, which is in the market like this. And uh, this helps actually in helping and building the business. A uh, quick word about myself. Uh, I have been in the industry for around 11 years at, uh, developing financial products, not only for startups or investors, but also for, uh, you know, working as, as a, you know, as a valuation expert, having this in, in my academia. So uh, my ask for today is, uh, you know, I'm looking for a strategic partnership with industry experts, uh, also looking for mentorship and uh, any industry expertise and connections. So thank you. Amazing, Abi. Thank you so much for sharing that and kicking us off tonight. Um, again, that's uh, representative of the kind of work that you've been doing with fellows. And it's so cool that you're tightening that into a product that can help founders across the globe, across, across the world, uh, really push their businesses forward and, um, and yeah, take them to the next step. So thank you so much for kicking us off and going thank first. You. All right. Next up, we have Alina Okun, who's talking about Pulsar Innovation. So Alina, I see you here. Are you uh, ready to roll? Screen is coming live. All right. Take it away. 75% of executives consider innovation their top three objective, but only 20% of them are ready to do it. Lack of relevant talent is a critical element of why these companies are not ready. At the same time, many highly skilled innovation professionals have no simple way of finding project opportunities. The problem is existing tools do not offer an easy way to connect organizations and these professionals. Other groups have solved this problem by creating marketplaces. There's a marketplace for finance professionals, marketing professionals, and software developers. However, such a marketplace does not exist for innovation professionals. Hi, I'm, my name is Alina Okun. Over the years, I have observed many brilliant ideas lost and innovative concepts go to waste. That stuck with me. I wanted to make a change and enable innovation and the creation of new systems and experiences. I have a doctorate in innovation and I have been an innovation strategist for several years. I was a product advisor at a US government innovation lab. I'm building Pulsar, a community and exclusive network of vetted organizations and innovative talent. Pulsar is part of a massive and growing gig economy market that has exploded as a result of COVID-19. Our business model is simple. We collect 20% of all transactions on the platform. We estimate earning $16,000 from each innovation professional per year, putting us on the path to $15 million in five years. While similar resources may be available in other places, the alternatives are either too expensive or too general. Pulsar is the only solution that provides specialized expertise in innovation at a reasonable cost. Our go-to market strategy consists of multiple channels. First, we are partnering with other organizations that already have an established supply of innovation professionals. Second, we're going to partner with the robotic process automation providers to help their clients with the RPA projects. That will help us build the demand side of the marketplace. Finally, we will post positions on job boards to attract more members to our platform. What I'm looking for right now are connections and introductions to companies that are working on innovative projects, connections to other innovation professionals, and introductions to advisors with expertise in marketplaces. Thank you so much. Wow, Alina, that was amazing. Thank you so much for sharing what you've been working on. That one hits near and dear to my heart as a former innovation consultant. Um, it's so needed. And like you said, there's vertical marketplaces in this gig economy in so many other categories. Where's the one for the innovation economy? 
Um, it's perfect. So thank you so much for going second and jumping on in. All right, moving right along with just awesome, awesome pitches. We have Anthony Thomas, who's going to be presenting Chaperone. All right, Anthony, I see you. Screen is coming up right now. You are, once you share, I believe you'll be good to go. Present. All right, you're live. Take it away, Anthony. Hi, everyone. My name is Anthony. I'm the founder of Chaperone, and we believe that the future of reading is social. All of us would say to some degree that books have changed the world from multi-billion dollar franchises, millions of copies sold, countless of lives changed. All of us have a particular book or books that we would recommend others to read. One of the books that I love is Zero to One, which talks about first principles, this idea that we should look at problems with a fresh perspective rather than trying to copy other people's solutions. It goes on to say that those who are able to take this perspective tend to be the ones who find value or create value in unexpected places. And it's these kind of insights and conversations that are taking place every single day. Unfortunately, none of it is being captured in one place. It's these conversations, not reviews or recommendations, summaries um, that give us the most value from books. And unfortunately for the 4.6 billion people who read books at least once a week, this social experience isn't accessible. The, the solution that exists are, you know, ten, well, are book clubs. And unfortunately, book clubs as a format is broken. Um, I've spoken to many club host people who go to book clubs. Um, and the challenge is that people either don't have time to join one or people who do find that it's inefficient. And this is where Chaperone comes into play. Chaperone is a social reading app where you can have audio and text conversations inside books you're reading. So you can follow your favorite people authors, influencers, friends. You can unlock their insights inside books you're reading. You can create your own insights and you can just have conversations with friends, partners, authors, influencers as well. And we've identified an untapped market. It's readers who drive these multi-billion dollar franchises and successful books, whether it's merch that they've created or ticketed events and experiences, educational courses, we will help readers create this value inside and alongside books and we'll take 20%. We estimate that in about five years, we'll, we'll be looking at a total addressable market of 40 billion based on a user base of 10 million users. And that at least 20% of that user base will be making at least 100K a year based on the cumulative total of content that they've created and sold. And that will be complemented by authors and publishers who are listing their books on Chaperone as a means of a marketing channel to generate um, interest and community and data-driven engagement around their books. So my background, I've been working for uh, GitLab, one of the world's largest um, remote companies in the world where we've championed asynchronous communication. And there are tons of tools popping up every day from Notion to Slack this trend is not slowing down anytime soon and it will be impacting our personal lives and we want to bring a synchronous communication to reading i'm also a gamer and using these insights of how gaming has used social to evolve as well as how uh, the newer models of revenue make uh, revenue within games this is inspiring how we're approaching chaperone so you can join private beta right now um, at the website, getchaperone.co. We've got some really good traction so far um, and we'll love you to be a part of that. The ask is fairly simple. Any introductions to authors working on upcoming books, introduction to smart people. So people who are interested in getting involved uh, as, as a team members or just advisors and also angel investor, investors and accelerators who really see the value and future of the creator, creator economy. Thank you. Anthony, that's amazing. I, I, I think every time you pitch that, everyone just chimes in, please sign me up because we've all had that experience of an amazing book encounter and then the, the desire for more. And I think what you're building in terms of the modern world of social media, we're in this renaissance of social media, 
of different verticalized social media of people, you know, no niche is too niche, billions of readers. So I think you're onto something and I love the progress you've made. I love the thesis. Um, really excited for you to push this into a live beta. So thank you so much, Anthony, for uh, sharing all that with everybody. Okay, up next is Elvin Atwine, who's gonna be talking to us about Chlora. And Elvin, I believe you do or do not have slides. Last time, Elvin, I see you coming up. Here we go, slides are coming through, this is great. So Elvin, when you're ready, come off mute. Hey, Andrew. All right, you're live. All right, Alvin, take it away. All right, are we good? All right, I'm with uh, Clora, and uh, we build financial tools for freelance workers. In 2020, 59 million Americans freelanced, and in 2027, we expect that to be about 86.5 million, which is going to be majority of the U.S. workforce. This is all great. I love seeing people chasing their passions, but there's a problem with this. Only one third of full-time freelancers have a retirement savings account even set up. So if you go to a traditional job, you'll have your retirement savings account set up. But if you, if you choose to freelance, none of that's really already taken care of. And Upwork did a study in 2020, in the summer of 2020, and asked a lot of regular employees if they would be willing to freelance. And majority of them said that they would, although 47% of them said they wouldn't give up the stability of traditional jobs. By stability, they're talking about there's no retirement and no health insurance at the moment for freelancers. So here's our solution. A payment system that holds off bits of freelancer earnings from each, tra each client transaction and invest them into a retirement fund based on the user risk tolerance. So for this user in particular, they're choosing to invest 3% of every one of their earnings. So you can see out of the check, they got $3.75 invested and we will assist with freelance taxes. So we would generate a 1099 tax form for them at the end of the year, or you can allow them to sync with Intuit products. Cases with, free, with freelance payments today. HoneyBook comes in at about $40 a month, which I've talked to a bunch of freelancers who said they weren't willing to pay $40 a month simply because it's not easy to predict how much you're going to make month over month as a freelancer, let alone how much you're willing to spend. So a lot of people have resorted to using Cash App. I myself use Cash App, but this, if you're using one of them, you're using all of them. And at the end of the year, you're gonna to have to sort of go through each one to figure out how much you made for taxes. This is unprofessional. There's no tax assistance when you choose to do it like this. So currently in the industry, as far as professional invoicing tools is concerned, HoneyBook comes in at about $40 a month. QuickBooks comes in at about $12 a month. And a cheap option is Square at 2.9% plus 30 cents, except they don't have invoicing. They don't have investment options embedded like we do. So our approach is we're gonna start with 2.9% plus 30 cents to it, charged every, in every transaction instead of any monthly fees to attract a large pool of freelancers. And then we'll go on to build additional products to tackle the insurance and retirement problems that I just mentioned. Here's why I feel like I'm perfect for this role. I have founder market fit. I was a freelance athletic photographer, and currently I'm actually funding this product, funding this project through DoorDash deliveries. I taught myself how to code from a stolen JavaScript book, which I eventually went on to return. So I'm pretty pretty scrappy. My ask is I'm seeking five hundred thousand dollars on a five million dollar post money cap safe with with a twenty percent discount. I'm going to use this money to onboard technical talent, acquire 100,000 freelance users, and generate $2.4 million in revenue. Uh, yeah, stay in touch. Here's my email and my phone number. I'll leave that up for a second. Thank you. Elvin, amazing. It's been amazing seeing you, you make this progress as well as hustle throughout the program. Um, I think the founder market fit is real. This is <laughs> very much built for you, by you. And I think anyone can see the hustle is real and the trajectory is there. Um, so Alvin, it's been a pleasure to, to see this and it's amazing to see what you've accomplished and what you're gonna build going forward. You're a, a, a startup unto yourself. So amazing stuff. Thank you for sharing. Next up after Alvin here is Farah Alshamas is gonna be talking to us and sharing Okel which is one of my favorite pitches, especially when she tells you where the name came from. Sorry to steal your thunder. It's just so amazing. So Vera, <laughs> take it away. I can see your Thank screen, you. you're rocking and rolling. 
Amazing. Thank you for that, Andrew. My name is Sarah, and I'm the founding CEO of Okel, a social networking platform that connects people over shared meals at local restaurants. In Arabic, Okel means to eat. In Hebrew, Okel also means to eat. You see, we can use different languages to describe the same thing, but when food becomes our shared language, magic happens. In 2013, I left war-torn Syria for asylum in the US, and I moved to a small town in Texas, there, I met my new best friend, Hannah Brown. Hannah's Jewish, which she intentionally hid from me for about a month after we'd met, knowing about the biased history I grew up with. However, our shared love for baking allowed us to see through the much more we had in common. That beautiful friendship I never thought was possible was made possible through food. So I went to college and I studied the anthropology, psychology, and history of sharing meals. I also started an organization to help refugee women monetize sharing their food created a media platform to celebrate the stories of immigrant restaurant owners, and went on to co-produce a docu-series where my co-host and I would unite disparate strangers over sharing meals. The instant community I witnessed during these meals on these tables left me hungry for more. And after coming back from my graduate studies abroad, I started working and I began to settle. And reality soon hit me. I was lonelier than ever. So I put on my anthropologist hat and went into the field. And it turns out I wasn't alone. Loneliness is a growing epidemic that costs the US $7 billion extra every year. In fact, if Harvard researchers are as smart as we think they are, 61% of young adults are lonely frequently to almost all of the time. When postgrads move to a new city, they seek out professional and interest-based communities to build connections. And they're even starting to revert to dating apps to make friends, but it's not, that's not working. 45% of those I surveyed feel lonely often to frequently, and 52% said they felt lonely within the last few days. You know, existing social networking apps are leaving us more lonely than without them. Research shows that 58% of the users wait up to a month to meet someone in person, and that's if they happen to be of the 50% that actually responds. In addition, meeting one-on-one -on -one can be too much of a hit or miss. Meeting in a big group can be too intimidating. It takes too long to meet in person and even longer to deeply connect. So we need a new social network that allows users to connect platonically in a small group with automated scheduling and which is designed to allow everyone to get real quick. That's why Ocal was born. And it works really easy. You download the Ocal app, you set up your profile, get matched, show up at the location and ask for a reservation under the name Ocal. You order and pay through the app, so splitting a bill is never a hassle. You connect, you enjoy, and repeat. For users, Okel offers delicious discounted dinners, meaningful conversations, and hassle-free scheduling and payment. For our restaurant partners, this would allow them fewer empty tables on weekdays, free marketing, and less food waste. Okel is starting with a freemium pricing model. We currently don't charge restaurants any fees in exchange for a 20% discount off the meals paid for through Okel's app. To become a $100 million company, Okel needs 5,562 5, monthly premium subscribers in 150 cities. The total addressable market is 3.5 billion and the service obtainable market is 34 million. To achieve this vision, Okel needs a strong team, the best restaurant partners, a stellar product, effective brand positioning, and a witty go-to-market strategy. Today, Okel is close to launching its private beta in New York City. And after that, we will be forming an advisory board, growing the team, raising a pre-seed round, building the MVP, and launching to the public. So if you're interested in joining this movement, you can check us out at jointocal.com because food tastes better when we eat together. Thank you. I'm blown away every time I hear that. Thank you so much, Farah, for sharing that, for sharing your passion and just that idea. It's just like everyone and the other one. I want to sign up tomorrow. Um, the epidemic of loneliness is real. COVID has hit us hard. We are all ready for new connections and sharing meals and learning about each other. So, so excited to, to be partaking of your beta when you launch it in New York. Okay, exciting times here because Jalene de Guzman is joining us uh, to talk about Pair with her co-founders. And so we have a team pitch coming up. They are well rehearsed and rock this across multiple screens. And so when you guys are ready, um, do you guys have a slide deck to show? Yes, okay, pull that up. When you 
can just do it now and then when it's up we'll get you guys can get going here it comes i see your screen clicking oh you hit the share and not present everyone does that that is a very common mistake okay. google needs to fix that <laughs> all right take it away Hair is co-founded by four first-generation female founders, and we've been friends for more than 15 years. Our journey to the startup world has been marked with adventure and a desire to make finding new experiences effortless for everyone. Pair is a social platform that makes sharing recommendations between friends easy, starting with restaurants and bars in New York City. While traveling together, we found that not only we have difficulty identifying quality recommendations. Currently, there is no one sticky technical solution. Overall, 98% of millennials and Gen Zers rely on word of mouth recommendations. Today, recommendations are still impersonal and untimely. What these platforms don't take into account is the value of social proof in the decision-making process. So instead, we resort to texting our friends because they know our preferences and we trust the quality of their recommendations. However, sometimes waiting for a friend to text you back just takes way too long. Enter Pair, an app that makes finding new experiences simple, personal, and social. Save places to your profile that you want to visit, stamp places that you've been to and can vouch for. Pair is the warm intro to bars and restaurants, and sharing recommendations has never been easier. As we build upon Pair's existing features, we'll be taking in a variety of new data sources to provide users with the best recommendations possible. Our go-to-market approach will leverage organic social behaviors to drive growth. We do this by building awareness to our product and brand through social media, building a community among our users, and enabling partnerships with restaurants and bars. We currently have over 130 users on our web app, and our waitlist signups are increasing by an average of 35% bi-weekly. COVID has vastly disrupted the landscape of the restaurant and bar industry, and after being in quarantine for a year, people now more than ever are looking for new experiences. That is, the demand has increased for new and personal recommendations, which opens up the market for pair. Our competitor is the most important factor and that's the trust between friends. They weigh reviews and recommendations equally, which leads to various pain points to make one decision. Our demographic of our peers want a simpler solution. By providing val value not only to them, but also to businesses, we have the ability to monetize through multiple avenues. In doing so, we have a market size of 404 billion, which increases by 85% to 505 billion by 2025. In an age where technology is becoming less humane, Pair is a platform that empowers friends to share recommendations for any industry, leading us to $1 trillion. We're beginning our pre-seed funding round over the next few weeks, so please contact us for more information. Thank you. Exceptional, thank you guys. That was so amazing. Again, I want in, uh, when you guys launch in New York, I think you guys are disrupting so many industries, whether it's recommendations for those restaurants and bars or everything else down the road, right? I think the engine that you guys are building is gonna be just so powerful. So exciting to see you guys just getting off the ground, launching and raising this first bit of capital. Um, you guys are gonna be a rocket ship. So it is, I can say I knew you when. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you so much. So moving on is Jason Garcia, who's going to be sharing Queso, the Queso app. And while I'm not a parent, I know exactly how useful this will be. So Jason, take it away. Hello, everyone. My name is Jason Garcia. I'm the father of three adorable and crazy little girls. And my family photos are a disorganized mess. Since our oldest daughter, Amelia, was born almost seven years ago, my wife and I have been searching for an app that would eliminate the hassle of organizing and, and sharing our family photos. We've tried at least eight different services, but whether it was us or loved ones taking the photos, they kept piling up. And the last thing we, do, we want to do when our girls get older is give them eight logins and a good luck pat on the back. 
After speaking with 60 plus parents, I discovered that we were not alone. In fact, just one parent proclaimed to have a single app for family photos that they love to use. So after seven years and thousands of photos floating around in the cloud, I decided to build Queso, a mobile app that saves parents loads of time by doing virtually all of the work for them. But I also want to give back and make a difference. And that's why we pledged to donate 10% of company revenue to a cause near and dear to our, to our, to our hearts, pediatric brain cancer. So in the current photo sharing universe of apps, you have the big boys like Google, Amazon, and, and Apple, who of course have the technology. But when it comes to a family focused user experience, there's a lot to be desired. Then there are a handful of apps that do have the family centric approach, but their technology falls way short and they create just as much manual labor as we're trying to eliminate. Parents, especially those with young kids would rather spend time taking a nap or maybe even a shower if possible. Queso bridges that gap by combining automation and machine learning with an approach built for parents. So how will it work? Well, first of all, Queso will have a camera built into the app and every time you use it to take a picture, it will recognize which of your children is in it and add it to that child's timeline. That timeline is always visible to the loved ones you invite to your account and you can also allow photos taken by them to be auto added to your child's timeline. Just think, no more annoying text messages asking for photos of the grandkids. Grandma and the rest of the fam can check in with Queso whenever they want to see how the little ones are doing. Queso's objective is to become a private and secure living archive of every family photo you've ever taken. It will enable users to easily retrieve images from their local device, as well as hard drives and third-party services like iCloud, Google Drive, and Dropbox. And of course, Queso will provide a smooth handoff when the kids get older, ensuring that memories literally last forever. Queso will be available for download later, that, later in the year uh, on, in the App Store and on Google Play. All features are included and your first five gigabytes of storage are also free. Once you hit the five gigs, you can pay $1.99 per month or $19.99 for the year. And remember, 10% of that fee goes towards, toward the fight against pediatric brain cancer. We've just launched our first round of private beta testing and I'd love it if you give it a try and help us make it the best, fam damn, photo, uh, the best damn family photo app on the market. And as a thank you for being part of this amazing experience, all D1 fam will get the service free for life. Thank you for, so much for being part of Queso's journey so far. And remember, next time you smile for a picture, say Queso. Oh my gosh, that's perfect every single time. Your family is beautiful. The free for life offer is amazing. And now I think I just realized why it's Queso. <laughs> uh, it's only been 10 weeks, Jason. Um, <laughs> I'm a little slow here. Uh, that's fantastic. I um, love you. that. I've, I've seen people work on this. I've seen people struggle with it and um, the world is ready for a solution and you've got it down tight. So <laughs> this, uh, this is awesome. We're only halfway through guys and you can just see the diversity and the excellence of what all these founders are building. So thank you, Jason. Up next, we are rounding into our final four here is Jason, or sorry, John Baldwin, who's gonna be coming to us to talk about Fender. So John, I see you on awesome. your screen. I'll tell you when your screen is up. Sharing, all right. I see it presenting almost there purple button all right good to go you're good to go take it away awesome thank you andrew i'm john c baldwin and i am the ceo and co-founder of fender and we're automating the workflow of the car crash industry so i got into a terrible accident uh, a few years ago and it taught me a number of things uh, more importantly that the industries control the consumer Accidents were timely and costly, and there is no place that exists that address all the needs of the car crash victim. That is until Fender, a curated marketplace that's gonna address all the needs of the car crash from start to finish, using AI assistance, competitive pricing, and more value for their insurance premium, we plan to put the accident victim en route to a better settlement. But in order to build a great product, you have to have an exemplary team. I'm John C. Baldwin, and my background is in sales. I uh, started off at J.P. Morgan Chase and worked at two startups selling uh, SaaS licensing agreements. And I'm also the cold, uh, cold caller, uh, making about 200 cold calls a day to get to a yes. John Allman is our CFO and co-founder, serial entrepreneur himself. 
uh, exited, had a successful exit from his startup, Advanced Seismic Technologies, selling cloud-based uh, scientific algorithms to oil companies. Keith Russell, who is our CTO and uh, co-founder, is a full-stack engineer and has worked on government-initiated uh, projects. Catherine Hurley is our legal eagle, and uh, she's currently working for Peloton and has worked at other startups. But prior to, she received her JD from Georgetown University. This is a big uh, opportunity. Uh, the car crash industry is a $206 billion total addressable market, uh, $108 billion in SAM and $1 billion in SOM. But we have to be very strategic as to how we will get to dominating the industry. And we think we've found it. Uh, so uh, we plan on, my computer is keep moving or slow, sorry about this. All right, uh, it's going as acting up. All right, so the business model is simple. We're gonna charge $300 for every warm lead. We wanna take on total car crash, which is 5 million cars each year. Uh, we think we can achieve 3% of the market by 2023 charge attorneys and auto dealers each $300, which is ultimately $600 bundled, and achieve that $90 million business revenue model by 2023. Just a really quick snapshot of what we're working on, uh, just kind of walking through, this is our MVP. A uh, person gets into a car crash and we start compiling all of the important data and information. You ask any salesperson, what's their biggest grievance in sales? And that is qualifying the lead. Uh, we here at Fender will qualify the lead for the personal injury attorney, ultimately driving down uh, the cost in regards to the onboarding, which takes about an hour and a half. We can get all of the information within 40 minutes, package the lead, and then hand it to the personal injury attorney on our platform. So just a really quick uh, preview of just what we're doing and how we're going to get there. So our go-to-market strategy is simple. Unique QR codes throughout the areas. Tow truck services, chiropractors, health clinics, and auto dealers will spread the word about Fender to accident victims. And in return, we will give them incentives for uh, partnering with us. Financial projections between SAS licensing agreements, subscription services, car rentals, and auto leads. In five years, we can dominate this market and make Fender the household name and the go-to place for when your car is totaled or just even a fender bender. So really quick snapshot of our traction. In June, we deployed our landing page. MVP was released in uh, mid-July. First customers onboarded in uh, late July. Currently in August, our customer acquisition is up by 50%, but we're still moving. And uh, we partner with Lofty Law and we're working with Andrew Stein uh, when people are requiring attorneys. Uh, we're introducing them, giving him the pertinent information to get them back into the driver's seat and in, onto their daily lives. So next steps are simple, funding, uh, so that we can have a intense marketing strategy. Uh, we definitely want mentorship and someone who is uh, very knowledgeable in the FinTech space and also our data and privacy protection, uh, especially when it regards uh, HIPAA. And someone uh, who is actually uh, very knowledgeable in SaaS software, because we consider ourselves to ultimately be the uh, sales force of the car crash industry. Fender, because it's time that some lines are actually crossed. Join us in crossing those lines. Andrew, thank you so much. The floor is yours. John, amazing. I've loved seeing you drive ahead as well as pivot and to ask every question on your way to taking Fender where it is. You're on a trajectory that I I'm sure that you're going to achieve your goals and really disrupt this industry, but really help so many people. Um, there's, I love the common thread amongst all these pitches, which is everyone is building for that need that they felt or felt so dearly and closely to their, to their lives. So John, it's amazing what you're working on. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're in our final three. Michelle Velin is up next and she's gonna to talk to us about Wondersource. Uh, Michelle, are you, I see you, you're off mute. When your screen is live, I'll tell you it's coming up. And there's the deck, present is hit. All right, take it away. Hi, I'm Michelle and I'm the CEO and founder of Wondersource. A few years ago, I found myself 
I was working what I considered to be an intense job and I found myself feeling really unwell. I wasn't sleeping well and I was going to my doctor trying to get to the bottom of it. And she eventually said, Michelle, until your symptoms are clearer, there was nothing I can do for you. But I knew that something was off and I was decided to get to the bottom of it. So after a lot of research, I came across functional medicine, which aims to get to the bottom, to the root cause of health issues. And after even more research, I found one practitioner who was able to help me. And through that process, we did some testing and I uncovered that I was burnt out. Now at the time I had already delved into the research and I knew that there was a very clear link between chronic stress and diseases down the line. And so I quickly took her recommendations into account and within one to two months, I was feeling much better. And to this day, I meet with her about every six months. And there are millions of people like me. Stress is on the rise globally. Chronic disease is on the rise. And there's a real need for prevention and support. Luckily, 90% of our health is socially determined, meaning what we eat, how we manage our stress levels, our self-belief. And yet conventional medical systems look at about 10% of the health equation and ignore the rest. And this is just not working anymore. To give you an idea, here are some health-related areas where conventional medical systems are typically not going deep enough that affect our overall health. Things like toxin exposure, stress management, hormonal imbalances, gut health. We believe that the future of health needs to be holistic, personalized, and supportive, and that the best medicine combines East and West practices. And at the same time, the market for coaches and experts is saturated and unregulated. And quality coaches and experts really need better ways to stand out from the crowd and focus on what they do best, which is providing their service. So bearing all of this in mind, and also coming across way too many people that felt lost or unsupported, we decided to build a solution. WonderSource is an online marketplace to find and book vetted experts, coaches, and alternative healthcare practitioners for healthier and more successful living. We offer one-to-one -one sessions and eventually we'll have group sessions. And we cover key areas where support can dramatically reduce stress and can be instrumental to living a healthy and successful life. Things like functional medicine, business and life coaching, mindfulness, and we built it with an evidence-based approach. Our mission is to make good mental, physical, and spiritual health easier to achieve and quality support to do so more accessible. The market opportunity for WonderSource is huge as we sit at the intersection of several related areas set for continued growth in the years to come, including complementary and alternative medicine and preventative healthcare. We will unlock this massive category by educating people around healthier living, removing shame from getting support in stigmatized areas, reducing search time for finding the right support, enabling trusted transactions, and really being the supportive place that people can turn to when in need. Like Airbnb, our easy, friendly, accessible platform will enable search, messaging, and payment to be self-contained and seamless. And at the same time, we'll be solving a real need for conventional medical systems. Doctors everywhere are overwhelmed, and my doctor is already excited to share this with her patients. We currently take 20% commission of each booking and expect to increase that to about 30% over the next two years. We're live with a beta version. And while we've been focused entirely on building at the supply side, we've had sessions booked across business coaching, functional medicine, EFT, and breath work with the largest transaction being 445 pounds. And people are loving WonderSource. We will be launching the MVP in September, at which point we'll be focused entirely on the demand side. We're currently looking for introductions to strategic people with a particular interest or proven track record in marketplaces with bookings, marketing for early stage startups, health tech, empowerment economy, and pricing optimization. Thank you so much for your time. I love that. I, I've loved seeing you evolve that um, over these 10 weeks. Uh, you're onto something really big. Unlocking that market, I think, is where this is at. There's so much to do in health and wellness and the marketplace that really brings these different parties together and solves that uh, the 90% of our health is just going to be so big. So you're onto something, Michelle. It's been awesome to watch you, to uh, watch you grow it. So thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, Regina Carey is up, about to share Plyovation with us. So your screen is live. If you are off mute, you're ready to go. All right. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, everybody. You've been amazing. This was a moment of joy. And I had to go to Spain to find it because I had just been through a cancer journey with my husband 
an addiction adventure with my oldest and near bankruptcy due to a broken mental health rehab system. I was living in a life that I no longer recognized and I felt completely depleted. Walking the Camino de Santiago helped me move through grief, the fear and the anger. And it was the biggest leap I ever took in my life. This trip is an example of plyovating. It's what we women do in plyovation, a methodology I created that marries the concepts of plyometrics, which is jump training and activation. Action begets everything. My name is Regina Carey and my thought partner is Marianne Swank. Together, we have 60 years of experience in education and training. Now I've been selling ideas, inspiration and happiness for over 30 years. And my most challenging customer is female. She's often stuck in her stories about following the rules, being satisfied with what she's been given and willing to help at all costs, even if her life depends on it. It usually does. When I was growing up, I remember looking at the faces of the women in my life, searching for some spark of passion, mischief, hopefulness, but I never saw it. The women around me were quiet, unassuming, polite, hospitable, and anxious. And I know that all of you grew up with a woman who was significant in your life, a mother or a mother figure. What would it have been like to grow up with a mom who was really happy, fulfilled, and living the life of her dreams? How would that have impacted you? That's the reason I created Plyovation. This nine month mindset transformation program uses comprehensive approaches, approaches including one-to-one, -one, group, graduate, and interactive work. Now the problem Plyovation solves is that of inertia. This stuckness, I believe, causes constriction, which leads to stress on our hearts. And did you know that heart disease is the number one killer of women. There are over 52 million women in my target group alone. One in three will die from heart disease. Plyovation teaches women how to take massive action in all areas of their lives, breaking out of old patterns to explore new ways of making decisions, creating pathways, moving into power, and being who they truly are in the world. Now, Plyovation was developed February of 2018, brought to market nine months later. And since December of 2019, we've graduated five cohorts, totaling 33 women. The best outcomes are the simple joys, like Catherine, who wanted to get healthy enough to ride her pink bike again, and really helping women live their best lives. The world needs outrageous creators, innovators, and problem solvers. And I help draw those gifts from women. I draw them out of women in the time it takes to create a human, nine months. To know a community is to know its women. And Plyovation helps women remember who they really are. Thank you. I want to say thank you, Regina. Uh, thanks so much for sharing that, what you've been building, um, your story. And you guys can imagine that Regina has been the heart and soul. I was having a struggle to decide if Regina was the heart and soul, if John was the heart and soul of this cohort. Everyone's been amazing together, but um, I think you can probably imagine what the vibes are like inside. And um, it's been so amazing to have Regina bring her energy and bring her experience into day one while she's building Plyovation. And there's so many great overlaps. So Regina, you're a rock star. Thank you. And um, here we go, guys. Last but not least, Sara is coming to us from London. So it's late over there, building Wonder Sparks. Do I have that right? 
Wonder Sparks. That's right. And I see it up here. If you're yeah. live and ready to go, I, I don't see you. I hear you. There you go. Okay. All right. Sorry. I'll take Perfect. Oops. Sorry. There we go. The value of the global toy market exceeds 90 billion US dollars. 80 percent end up in landfills, oceans, or incinerators, and 90% are made from non-recyclable petroleum-based plastics. Lily is six, soon to be seven. She sifts through her mound of toys, carelessly tossing aside those she's no longer interested in. She unfortunately has no notion on the value of her toys and the pain points they cause her parents. My name is Sarah Farah. I'm a second-time entrepreneur, continuously driven by positive impact. I founded Wondersparks to find a solution for deadweight loss with children's toys, a highly unsustainable industry. My mission is to empower millions of kids, educating them to be change makers for a more sustainable future by teaching them the value of their possessions. The average child loses interest in a new toy in 36 days, has four toys they've never played with at all, and one in five kids gets bored of the latest must-have in less than a day. 78% of children also start receiving cash or gift cards instead of physical items from the age of five, ranging in values of up to $153. As technology develops at a pace, children are moving away from toys and towards gaming at an earlier age. So how do you use this trend for a greater mission? To teach children the value of their toys and financial literacy in a digital age. Our solution is Wondersparks, a themed gamified platform within a virtual world for children to recirculate toys ready for a new home, all under parental control. Our MVP is a junior marketplace where children will learn to recycle their toys by trading them amongst a secure community of peers in their local area. Lily is keen to play with something other than her old Barbie and Lego castle, so decides to trade them in. Her trade earns her virtual coins, which will enable her to build a virtual world, access educational partner online games, or she can trade them in for another toy or even donate them. She logs on and enters her items, having followed careful fun instructions with a description of why she loved it. The more sustainable and better condition her toy, the more coins she earns. She understands cheating by listing an item not in the condition it's in will mean being expelled from trading for a period of time, stopping her from earning coins. Future growth possibilities include gaming development, including IP, category expansion beyond toys such as clothing and electronics from teams, and partnerships with established junior fintechs expanding on the education of financial literacy. Our go-to-market strategy is launching with Red Rope events in London with one borough and one age group, where every child will bring a toy to trade. Our learnings will help us expand our current prototype, which we will roll out by age and region. I'm currently refining the gaming concept and building the UX UI prototype as we speak. Having slightly pivoted since joining day one, my next steps are to build the business model and format a pitch deck. I'm currently seeking help with networks, potential investors for mentorship within the online gaming world, logistics and fintechs. Thank you for your time. My contact details can be scanned. I do hope you reach out to find out more about Wonderspots. Sarah, thank you so much for that. I'd love to see your progress, the way that you've worked through so many options, so many different paths. And like you said, slightly pivoting, both holding to your conviction of how to solve this while going where the, uh, the solution is taking you. So it's been amazing to see your journey and thank you so much for such an awesome pitch. That rounds us out. What uh, an evening. I um, get so thrilled when I see these back to back, the work that these fellows, these founders have put in to present these tight pitches, but really the work behind the scenes to build these businesses, to refine their models, to make these plans is, is overwhelming. And it all comes together and we're so excited to put them on a stage and for them to have a chance to share with the world. So if any of these entrepreneurs, if any of these pitches in these startups excites you, makes you wanna join, makes you wanna download the app, um, 
go find them. They are all in the middle, the messy middle, the awesome work of building, and they want to collaborate and they want to be with you. Um, if whatever the, the, the ask was, lean into that um, as these entrepreneurs, these founders are right in the thick of it. Um, so thank you to all of our fellows um, for wrapping up cohort four on such a high note. Um, thank you to everyone listening, watching. Um, we're excited that you got to see another batch of what the day one fellows are building. And here we go on to the next big thing. Cohort five is kicking off in September and we're going to be excited for what's next. So thank you to everybody and we'll see you around. Have a great night. Bye everybody.